Uh, good morning, Paul Arvin. A uh, little technical issues here, but we got there. Um, I'm a director at AMD. Uh, we've got, go ahead, Dirk. Uh, Dirk Blevins, senior platform architect, principal engineer at Intel, networking and edge group. Rob Nance, uh, director of technology for uh, Jable. So today we're going to walk through actually a uh, solution basis, um, focus on HPM and actually how we are implementing it and kind of what uh, uh, I'd say challenges we have with implementing it uh, as we move forward. Lessons learned at least. Hey, lesson learned, exactly. So I, I think people have seen this, but the idea of a DCMHS is having a modular uh, HPM. So you could design one HPM that works uh, across multiple servers or chassis and across multiple vendors is, is the goal. Um, it's a pretty broad consortium now, so if you look, um, we've got Intel, Dell, Google, HP, um, Meta, Microsoft, Able, AMD, and then recently we've added Ampere and NVIDIA since the, the SOCP Summit, um, and there's a, a lot of um, subtopics that, and within this. Um, we just talked about uh, some of the interoperability. Uh, we're going to be focused on the HBM itself, but it's a pretty large work group with uh, several sub-projects. Uh, again, what we're going to focus is on the implementation details of the actual spec. So um, AMD actually did a FLW, so that's the full width design. Um, really impressed walking the floor how many uh, designs are, are DCMHS compliant now. So you're seeing a lot more than I expected, uh, really impressed. Um, we've seen uh, quite a few booting ones also. So we, we've done it in, in in-house uh, FLW. It's based on our Genoa turn design. Um, actually, I brought one in here just to give you an example. This is a non-booting one. Uh, but we do have a booting system on the floor. Um, and we have a, that's kind of a hot mock-up one. And then we worked with Jable and put that actual board into their chassis. And it worked perfectly. <laughs> it fit like a glove. So it's nice that the, all the mechanical all the keep outs actually worked really well. Yeah, good validation of all the work we've done for the specifications. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and so that's at our booth also if you want to look at it. Um, so what, in terms of some of the details that we implemented, so it is DDR5, it is um, 12 channels, one per, cha one per um, one channel, 12, uh, one per channel. Oh, thanks, Rob, look at that. A little van of mine going here. Yeah. Uh, we have the FS, SFF connectors on there, uh, also called multi-track, and then we support the, support the MRCPS power supply. Um, in terms of challenging, it's a tight board. <laughs> it's a, as we kind of worked through the details, we, we left room on the side for actual cabling, so it's kind of narrow, and it's not terribly deep. Uh, so when you look at it, just fitting it. And for AMD, we've got north and south VRs, so there's a lot of just VR real estate there. Um, where, as you see, CPU power has gone up pretty significantly gen to gen, which is driving really big sockets. Um, and it's also driving a lot of ERs. So that, that was one of the challenges that we got into. Um, another detail is, is we really designed this around a two socket for the type one and some of the keep outs on the backside. As you put the, a single socket on here, you get into some um, keep out area concerns that we're still working actually, because uh, it's more opportunities around a two socket. Um, another thing is just as you look at it, how do we get read timers or switches on there if needed? So as you look at PCI Gen 5, it's been challenging. Gen 6 is going to be more challenging. You want to use the same form factor, so how do you fit that in there? Um, another thing I want to point out is as you look at different designs, we have the innovation zone. Um, I've seen a lot of those using it. That is their second OCP NIC card. We're actually using it for uh, boot, boot storage there. But another thing that it's, uh, how do you optimize it for your, your design? Uh, we see a lot of customers that are kind of bifurcated. We see customers that say, I don't want an OCP NIC. It's, you're burning PCI lanes. Um, and then we say, other side, we say, you know, we had two OCP NICs, we own them all by 16. So, and there's limited amount of lanes, so how do you allocate the lanes? Um, so that's kind of an overview. Again, we have that at our design in our booth. Our, our plan at AMD is to use this as our reference designs going forward. So we do this for turn. As you go into our next portfolio of products, they're going to all be based on DCMHS to make them modular. Thanks, Rob. Unrehearsed, even. <laughs> I know. So, like, likewise, as um, 
um, Paul just explained they had developed a a full width design. Um, Intel's done that as well. There's there's as as we said, there's tons of examples on the show floor. It's fantastic. But the system I'm here to talk about today is the density optimized uh, Type Two system example um, that Intel implemented. Um, now it's called density optimized for a reason. It's a really really tight design. Um, and when we looked at it, we were trying to fit solutions that maybe uh, you know in in different form factors than what you've seen in the standard server. Um, our vision of implementing this was a situation that we could uh, basically use this board in different types of servers, maybe a storage server or a, a network server or various other things that could, the board could be reoriented and moved around in many different uh, ways, shapes, and sizes. As we developed this, we obviously tried to take all the specifications into account. Um, if you see, we used the, the new connectors and power connectors that we developed and as, a, as a part of the work stream and drove to the industry. Um, we've used the the MCRPS supplies, the MPIX, the MXIOs, um, the PEST team, basically all the, the, the functions that we were asked to, to, to look at as a um, specification body. Um, that's worked out quite well in these solutions, but as I said, it was, a, it was actually a pretty difficult design. Um, some of the things that we looked at um, and advice I guess I would give is as you start these designs, learn from the challenges that Paul just mentioned, what Rob's going to be talking about and what we've done in our implementations. And some of those things were routing density um, and placement density. You know, these things were really, really um, very heavily packed in that perspective, um, from that perspective, which makes things like uh, power delivery um, and uh, routing of the solutions difficult. So, you know, my advice in looking at some of these things would be to place and route these things very carefully as and plan your placement and routement, routing uh, solutions. So, uh, some of the areas where we had, if you notice the riser connectors that exist in the middle, you know, there's sideband signals that need to go to all four corners of the board. So making sure that you're making those considerations up front, not just focusing whole, solely on like PCIe uh, placement. That's a that's a big thing to take a uh, and look at and plan properly. Um, the density of where the PCIe card goes, there's height restrictions there. So you got to be careful what kind of components that you're placing in these areas. Um, the reality is, though, whenever we got to the end of this, it was actually very, very um, successful. Um, and, and again, likewise, we've been you know swapping out systems. And I think you guys have in the in the experience center a, a you know a vision of swapping out different HPMs, right, Rob? And yep. Uh, one U and a two U, where we're swapping in and out some yep. HPMs from you guys, and yep. Yeah, you can see that out there. So it's pretty, it's pretty exciting to see it work. Practice would encourage you to go out there, would encourage you to go to the different booths that, that uh, we have at the Intel booth and you have at the AMD booth. Look at some of these systems, look at some of the challenges and talk to some of the others that are um, there. So with that. Yeah, ahead. I was gonna, the one thing I was gonna touch on uh, is DCSM. That's another thing I think that's, that, that's been challenging, just the size of that and how it scales. It might come up in MSIF, but in other things we, we think it's a, there's other opportunities for form factors that are probably denser. And if, if you look at how tight the board is, that's another area, I think, of innovation that, that we're looking at. Yeah, and that's definitely a good point, uh, Paul, in that as we look to the future, we're not, we're not done yet. You know, we've, this journey's just started. We've seen, we're seeing great success. There's areas we've already found for optimizations, future implementations. We talked about some of those in the earlier sessions today. So, um, you know, let's, uh, you yeah, know, it's great. Ready to get going. Rob, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit behind here. Huh? Let's see, how do we change this over oh, just doing your thing? Okay. So, yeah, the, um, the three of us did a talk in the regional summit in Prague last April. Um, we've been, in that talk, I, I, I went through some of the lessons learned that we have on the Jabil side as we went through the development of our uh, product. We're kind of out front with uh, trying to get the design done uh, on MHS to work through some of the issues and help with the specifications. So, we have a product, 1U MDINO uh, MHS, that's launching with uh, Emerald Rapids Intel processor uh, time to market. So that's coming out very soon. Um, in this talk, though, we've, what's happened since then is we've kind of gotten through the majority of our validation on that platform. We're also working on a 2U chassis. You can see both the 1U and 2U out in the Experience Center, like we said. 
Um, but since we've gotten pretty far along in that design, we said, okay, what can we do now? We, we kind of went out to some of our partners, Intel, AMD, uh, AMI, A-Speed, and we said, okay, we're, we're now looking to implement or to integrate some um, other vendors' MHS components into our system to see what kind of issues and lessons we can learn in doing that. So I'll, I'll, work to, I'll talk through that today. Um, just a little bit of background. Um, the, we have a Jable designed uh, DCSCM. We have the A Speed 2600 for the BMC. We implement Root of Trust, Intel PFR Root of Trust in an FPGA. Mm -hmm. And the interface between uh, DCSCM and HPM, we are currently uh, MCSI, not LTPI, working to move that to LTPI. So let's go to the next. Um, so when we contacted A Speed, said, hey, would you guys be interested in? and coming over trying to get your board in our design and get the system up and running. They said, sure, it sounds like a great uh, experiment to do. First thing we looked at was, you know, what are the differences here? Um, and there's some pretty significant, significant ones. Um, they had already implemented LTPI. Obviously the DCSCM module doesn't have to go into an MHS chassis, so they had this module brought up and functioning in some other systems already. Um, but they were implementing LTPI. They do have a, a 2600 for the BMC. They have their 1060 ASIC for Rooter Trust. So as we put that that module, go ahead to the next one, Dirk. Um, so w how did this go? Well, it went pretty well. We we spent about three weeks, two weeks, <laughs> two minutes. We spent about three weeks in the lab, uh, A Speed and Jable engineers, to get the system up and running. Um, short answer is we the majority of issues we ran into were that interface between DCSCM and HPM, uh, MCSI versus LTPI, and some timing issues on powering up. Um, we got through that. What we then, then did was brought AMI in to the mix and said, okay, um, would you be interested in putting some of your stuff on, this, uh, on the uh, DCSCM as well? So we, we were able to move from OpenBMC uh, firmware, which A-Speed had implemented, to uh, AMI's SPX and AMI's Tektronic, uh, Tektagon uh, Router Trust on the 1060. So a few different uh, implementations there we were able to demonstrate. Right, so Code and replug worked, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and believe me, we were anxiously awaiting some of the work that Tim and others talked about here. <laughs> we had to work through some of that. But the other thing we've done is we already mentioned we uh, did some mechanical integration. Uh, I say mechanical, mechanical because these are not functional yet, but we have uh, an FLW from AMD and Intel, both two socket. We have uh, an MDNO from Intel that's single socket. We've been able to integrate those into our 1U, 2U chassis. I'll just kind of cut to the chase here. It went very well. Obviously, the board form factors, the mounting holes, they're all well-defined, so that went okay. There were two areas, if you run, run to the next slide, Dirk, two areas that we kind of ran into. There's a couple of options for a PSU connector. Of course, we on the Jable side chose one, and Intel and AMD chose the other, <laughs> and so that caused uh, some misalignment there and we had to work through. And then there's board thickness differences between the HPMs, and that, of course, for the straddle connector between OCP and DCSCM causes some movement there. We were able to solve all of that, um, all of those issues with a new tim pan design. We use a tim pan for the HPM. We just uh, had our mechanical guys do the appropriate tim pan for the boards, and we were able to realign everything. So, um, so yeah, I think I've already covered this. In, in summary, I think it went very well. Um, just a couple of mechanical things that we probably didn't. Uh, well, the board thickness we kind of we kind of thought about, but the uh, power supply thing was new to us. So with that said, you know, as we look uh, to move forward, obviously we mentioned that, that these efforts are going quite well. Um, you know, please be involved. I'm mentioning MSIF here as one potential uh, work stream. You heard Tim and folks talk about some others. You know, go out on the show floor, check out some of these systems, and, and get involved. If you're seeing things not working, you're seeing things that, that are, are challenging or problematic, please get back with the work streams, and we'll be more than glad to help. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you.